Hello and welcome to another episode of the Agency Leadership Podcast. I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Ginny Dietrich. Ginny, I think we're going to have to have a one-on-one today. Okay. Right after this. I'm scared. You should be. You should be. It, it, it's been at least, you know, a couple of episodes since I've ranted about one-on-ones as, as part of the topic. So we decided, hey, let's have a whole episode on devoted one-on-one. to my obsession with one-on-ones. Because I just, I, I rant and rave about it all the time with my clients. Well, and the thing is, is that they're extraordinarily important and people don't do them, which is shocking to me. Shocking. They don't do them and they don't do them well. But they, they perhaps make a bigger difference in the performance of your agency than maybe almost anything else except getting your pricing correct. 100%. I mean, if I had to tell an agency owner three things they should do, I would tell them hold one-on-ones, get your pricing correct, and boil down what you do and who you do it for into one sentence. If you can do those three things, you'll probably be successful. If you can't, you might still be successful. (laughs) It's just in spite of yourself, not because of what you're doing. And I would say for those of you who work with contractors, freelancers, in addition to team or only, you know, you don't have a team or you work with other agencies because you're a solopreneur, one-to-ones are just as important in those scenarios. Yes, absolutely. And you should also be looking at having one-on-ones with your clients and client contacts as well. Maybe not every week in those cases, it sort of depends on the, the cadence of the work that you're doing, but you need to be having those opportunities to get together. But for the, for today's purposes, we're going to focus on employees and maybe to a lesser degree, contractors who are doing a substantial amount of work for you. Um, you know, that's, that's really the focus that we have, but, but they are, they are so vitally important. You've got to do them. You've got to do them without fail every single week. And you got to do them correctly because you can't just check the box and say, I'm having a meeting. It needs to be run properly in order to get the best results. Absolutely. So I think we both agree on what correctly means, but what is your de- definition of running them correctly? So the, the most important thing is the employee needs to drive the conversation. Yeah. And so it's really tough for those of us who are entrepreneurs and agency owners and business leaders. We want to talk. We've got a lot of ideas. We've got a lot of questions and concerns for our team members. And so we come into these meetings typically saying, you know, we, we've got to address this. We've got to solve this problem. We've got to address it. We, no, stop, shut up, listen. The more that you listen, the better off you're going to be because it helps you not just in that one-on-one, but it helps you in almost every meeting when you shut up and listen. It helps you in new business meetings. It helps you when you're doing employee reviews. Yes. Almost all the time, we'd be better off talking less. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the phrase is you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Double the listening. I totally agree with that. Um, You know, I I think I've mentioned before that a girlfriend of mine is going through uh, cancer treatment and I'm I'm helping run her firm while she's out. And that's one of the first things I did was set up one-to-ones with people. And, And I said to her team, this is your meeting. And they were like, what? And so I, I, you know, I've, I've started to, to, to sort of transition that a little bit. She was doing one-to-ones, but I think she was, they, it was a combined agenda and getting them to understand that this is their meeting and that they're responsible for coming to the meeting with an agenda. And if they don't have an agenda, and I do this with my team too, if you don't have an agenda and you're not prepared for the meeting, we're not having it. Like take your 30 minutes, go back to your desk and do your, do your job. And I'm going to do the same because I'm not going to sit sit on zoom with you and just chit chat as much as I would like to do that um, with, with no agenda. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense to, to have the meeting if the employee is not driving that conversation right. forward, because that's, it's the whole reason that you're doing them. This is not, this should not be a client check-in call. It's not to try to figure out, okay, where are we at on the, it's not a status report. It's not, right, 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 I mean, right. some of those things may naturally come up as part of the conversation. And, and so I'm not saying don't talk about clients. Absolutely. You should talk about clients, but it, it shouldn't be the primary vehicle that you're using to stay up to date on client activities or, you know, the progress of a website build or a PR campaign or something like that. It, it really is about what you can do as a manager to help your employee perform better. 
And I think that's an important mindset shift that we have to have. We're not there to direct our employees. We are not there to hold them accountable when they don't do things. We are there to serve, as I like to say, they're, they're blocking back, to use yep. an American yep. football analogy. Yep. And so as a manager, we want to try to help our employees perform to their highest by knocking down whatever obstacles they may have, whether that's an internal obstacle, a training obstacle, a client obstacle, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, our role is to clear it out of the way so that they can perform to their best. Otherwise, we end up doing the work for them. Yeah, and I would say one of the other benefits of having a weekly one-to-one -one with your your team is that you're provide you're always you're oh you have cons consistent conversations about what's happening to your point, what obstacles are in the way, and you're also able to provide feedback in in real time. So instead of waiting for an annual review or a quarterly review, and you know saving everything up in your notebook so that you can like slam them with feedback and criticism, <laughs> constructive criticism once a quarter or once a year, you have those conversations consistently. And I have a lot of clients who are very uh, <clears throat> conflict adverse. And so I say to them, this is a great way to get past the conflict, because if you have those conversations consistently and you're, you're, you're pulling down the obstacles and you're providing feedback and you're helping them grow, you don't have to have the annual you sucked this year and you have to do X, Y, and Z better this, this year, or you're not going to have a job. You, those conversations stop entirely. There's no need for it. Now, of course, there are employees that don't perform and that's a different, different scenario. But if you're using one-to-ones correctly, you're able to provide that feedback in real time and you don't have to save it all for the annual review. Right. And, and I don't think it's any surprise. I've, I've said before on this show and elsewhere that I don't like annual reviews. I think I they're, I think they're <laughs> dumb. I, do I, 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 I Unfortunately, I think they are a necessary evil because employees like them to take place. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a box to check off, but, but my view of, of uh, an annual review is that there should be not a single thing that comes up that hasn't already come up. Yep. And I, you know, I've known managers in the past who used to keep a file folder with that, you know, here are the things I need to cover during the review. And they would just fill it up throughout the course of the year of things that they needed to touch base with the employee about during their review. That's dumb. Why aren't you just talking to them about it in the moment? Right. And and when you do something like that, what you end up doing is you, you end up turning the review into Festivus. And we just sit there and we have the airing <laughs> of grievances, which I know I've used that analogy as well I at terminations, but it is the same thing. If, if you, it, it, no, Festivus should be its own thing. Analogy. And it's the only time you should have an airing of grievances, or perhaps when you're talking to, you know, me or Ginny, if you're one of our agency owner clients that we work with, we can be your therapist and you can just, you know, vent. If that helps, great. But don't do that to your, uh, to your employees. It serves no purpose. It can be Festivus. <laughs> I've actually never heard you use that analogy. That's great. Oh, I, 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 I'm sure I have used that. Well, I, I know I use it regularly when I talk about terminations. Maybe we need to talk about terminations. That's I haven't awesome. talked about that in a while, and I like those. So, um, but, it, but it just it, it really does come down to you should be talking about these issues as they come up, and the one on ones are the opportunity to do it. Hopefully, you're not the one who has to raise it first because good employees know where they're falling short and will raise things and say, hey, I'm not having enough time to spend on this task or right. that task. Right. And and so it gives you the, the natural open door to the conversation that you want to have anyway, but it's in a much more friendly way because you're not sitting there saying, you know, you told me 11 months ago that you were going to X, Y, or Z right. because they're bringing it up. Right. And, and so therefore they feel like they have more control over it. And so much of the employee manager relationship comes down to the feeling of control that somebody has as managers we need to give up some of that feeling of control because we don't really have it and the employee needs to gain some of that feeling of control because it helps to empower them and makes a good result more likely it doesn't guarantee it you're still going to have underperformers you're still going to have people that you know need course corrections or even need to to move on to greener pastures somewhere else sure but if they feel like they have more control over the situation, you are more likely to have the results you're looking for. You remind me of, you know, when I was a young whippersnapper account supervisor at a big agency, my review one year was you need to be more strategic. And I was like, okay, happy to do that. How, what does that mean? But that was it. Yeah. There right. was no professional development. There was no like, 
this is what we're looking for, or you've done a really good job tactically on these things. And here we're looking for you to think bigger picture. And here's how you do nothing. None of that. It was, you need to be more strategic. And I was like, Oh, okay. But I don't know how. And I will, I always remember that when I'm working with my team, because it's easy for me to say today, you need to be more strategic, but I have to help them understand how to do that. And you, it's really challenging to do that in an annual review. But if you're having your one-to-ones, you can say, okay, this is great. Now, if you, one of the things that I know we, that we're, that we're working toward is for you to be more strategic. Here's what that looks like the next time you do this. And you're able to provide that feedback consistently, you know, so the, and, and you're coaching and you're providing mentorship and you're giving some pro- professional development at the same time. You can't do that if you're only waiting for the once a year review. Right. And I would also say to the extent that you can ask more questions rather than making statements in the one on ones, yes. you're going to be you're yes. going to be in a better place. Yes. And so, you know, instead of saying that meeting with the client went totally off the rails, we said things we you know, we overcommitted, we did, instead of saying that, which may in fact be true, instead say, how do you think that meeting went? How could we do that differently in the future? Again, that's shifting that feeling of control back to the employees so that they have an opportunity to raise it. Now, they may not see it. And so you may still be in a position where you have to say, I kind of feel like we overpromised. Sure. But but at least give them the, the opportunity to to acknowledge it because most employees actually do notice some of these things. For sure. Um, and so if you if you give them that opportunity, so so you know, first and foremost, shut up. Secondly, ask questions first. And only after you've exhausted all that should you be making statements in the one on one. You know, that it, that exact scenario just happened with someone on my team where we were in a meeting and she overpromised. And I did that during the one-to-one. I asked her, you know, how she thought. And what it came, what it came down to was that she didn't feel comfortable. Well, first of all, she was it, it was conflict with the client. Like she didn't want to say, well, that's not within scope or it's not within budget. But she didn't feel comfortable doing that because she didn't fully understand the scope of work and as it relates to the budget, which I didn't realize. And you know, I, I thought it was pretty clear and it was not. And so we were able to, to dig into that even deeper so that she has a better understanding now. And that, and certainly she, there's some coaching that needs to be done with the conflict side of things because she feels very like, doesn't want to make the client mad and, you know, wants to be, yes, we can absolutely do that even if it is over promising. So we have some professional development to do there as well. But the, the crux of the problem was that she didn't understand the scope of work as compared to the budget at all. Well, and and so that, you know, one of the other things you can do with your questions is instead of even looking at a past meeting project conversation, whatever, say, how can we do this differently in the yep. future? So yep. so with the feedback that you got, you know, about being more strategic, you know, if I were your supervisor, I might say to you, hey, you know, how could we be more strategic with this client account in the future? And that then gives you the opportunity to say, what the hell does that mean? I have no idea mean? what you mean. Right. <laughs> right? And, but, right. But that's fine. You can have that conversation yeah. or you throw out an idea and I say, well, that's not really what I mean. What I mean is this. Yep. And and so that's so much better than just saying you got to be more strategic and then just kind of washing your hands of it and being done. Because now you've, you've sort of just, you know, laid this egg on top of them and they're like, what do I do with this? What I do I no, say? I, I literally don't, I don't, had no idea. Yeah. It was it, like 27 years old. I was like, I, oh, okay. No idea. Right. And so, you know, and I think it's it's tough because, you know, most agency owners were high performers in their previous jobs. Yep. They sort of knew what to do and, and that's why they ended up becoming an owner. Yep. Most of your team will not be at that same level. Fair. They may get there one day. They may not. Right. You need to 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 rethink your role because you are now you know, we call ourselves managers. You're not really managers. You're really a coach or a mentor. Yep for that team member. And so you need to figure out what it's going to take to get the most out of each one of them. And it's going to be different for each one, which is why these one-on-ones can be valuable because it's the opportunity to really get to know the employee and understand, because if they're driving the conversation, you figure out what they think is important. Right. That's useful intelligence. Yeah. And so if they're focused on entirely different things than what you would have, then that's, you know, that's something either to coach them on or maybe just to understand and say, okay, well, if that's what you're focused on, here's how I can get what I want from within that framework that you're presenting. Yeah. And I think you also find some strengths that you didn't realize they had. Like we, I have one colleague who I, 
it, we've worked together for years and over the years I've, I've come to realize that he's really great. I mean, really great at playing devil's advocate and throwing holes into things, whether or not he believes what he's saying, but he's really great at just poking holes into things. And so when we, when we have a challenge, I will call him and say, okay, here's our challenge. Here are the solutions. And he just pokes, poke, 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 until it's something that's solidified. And I wouldn't have known that, that he was good at that had I not had the one-to-ones because, you know, we're both doing different things in the business and we're both running at a thousand miles an hour and we're both, I'm doing my job. He's doing a great job at his. And had we not had the one-to-ones, I wouldn't have found that little specific skill set that he has that, you know, especially in crisis work, he's is great because I can say, okay, here's the scenario. This is what we're thinking for the solution. Get Go at it. And he just poke, 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 poke. And he's great at it. And I would not have figured out that that, that is a skill set without having the one-to-one. Right. And, and I think the, the other thing that you need to do with those one-to-ones is you need to, I've always told my team members to have as part of that agenda, what do you need from me? Yep. And, yes. and again, that's a mindset shift, right? Because yes. they yes. work for me. They shouldn't right. be telling me what to do. Right. Absolutely, they should. Yes, they because should. Because they have things that they need from you. They need approvals. Yep. They need guidance. Yep. They need answers. They need you to talk to a client. They they need you to do certain things. And if you are the obstacle, they they should be using that meeting as an opportunity to tell you how they can get you out of their way. Right in order to get things done. And, you know, I would always tell people if, if you're able to, to get it into that one-on-one -on -one meeting, it's much more likely that I'm actually going to get it done than if you've just sent it to me an email because my inbox is just full of stuff. It's easy for, if I don't get to it within the first, you know, four or five hours, it scrolls so far down yep. that until I get around to cleaning out my inbox yep. a week later, I don't yep. even see it. Use that one-on-one -on -one if you're the employee to get those things cleared off your plate and make sure that your boss knows what it is that you need from them in order to be successful. Write it on a post-it note. <laughs> but for those of you in audio land, you're, you're not seeing that Jenny is having a really difficult time figuring out where the camera is, even though all she would have to do is put it in front of her own face because that's what's there, front and there center. Go. There, there you go. Good job. Well Write done. Write it on a post-it note. Write it on a post-it note. Take it on your computer. There you go. What do you need from me? Right. And by the way, this is also a culture you need to create within your agency. So when you have managers within your agency that have people reporting to them, you need to make sure that they're doing these and yes. they're doing them the right yes. way. Yes. Because it's no good if you're the only one doing them with your direct reports. It needs to be done with every single manager within your agency. And as you grow, this becomes a bigger and bigger deal. And so you need to spend time in your one-on-ones with those managers, coaching them through the process, asking them how their one-on-ones are going and making sure that they are going through this same kind of process. Send them back to this podcast if you want and, and have them listen to this about how they should be handling those meetings because it's any manager, it's not just agency owners. I would say this. The, it, this is very gratifying for me. When I hear an employee say, I learned so much from you, I know I'm doing my job through the one-to-ones and through leading the agency. That to me is so much more gratifying than sitting down with somebody and telling them how to do their job. Yep. So much more. And it is, I think you're right. It is a mindset shift for sure. And, and the way that we've sort of quote unquote been raised to do our jobs is, is, can be a bit far fetched from this, from this point, but it's far more gratifying to hear somebody say, I learned so much from you. And that goes for clients too. I love it when clients say that. And that's, I think where you're trying to strive toward is you're giving them so much value in their work, in the working relationship through one-to-ones, through team meetings, through working together, that they are learning from you and are, are building their skill set because of you. Absolutely. And, and look, they're learning from you, whether they acknowledge it or not, but they may not be learning good lessons right. if you're not practicing what you <laughs> preach. You right. cannot go to your managers and say you need to have regular one on ones without fail, never cancel, all that kind of stuff. And then you cancel all the time yeah. on your own direct reports. Right. They will see that behavior and they will use that as their model. So yes. they're learning from what you do with them, even if you don't realize it, even if they don't say it. 
And so you need to be really thinking about that, not just in terms of your one-to-one -one meetings, but everything else that you're doing. You know, if, if you're miserable at email, they'll probably be miserable at email. Yep. You know, if, if you're constantly canceling, they'll constantly, if you show yep. up late to meetings, they'll show yep. up late to meet. Yep. So, so make sure that particularly when it comes to these one-to-ones that you are modeling that good behavior for them. All right, so Chip, you had three things at the beginning. Have one-to-ones, get your get pricing, your pricing right. correct. Yeah. What was the third? Get boil down your positioning into one sentence. If you can't yeah. tell me who you, what you do and who you do it for in one sentence, then you need to keep working on what your focus is because otherwise, how can you tell a prospective client that you're the place that, that they should be sending their business? Totally agree. So there are your three things, there are three takeaways. One-to-one's extremely important. Absolutely. And with that, we will end this two to many. I don't know what we call this, but. <laughs> two to many. <laughs> this this episode of the agency podcast is now concluded. I'm Chip Griffin. I'm Jenny Dietrich. And it depends. <laughs>